In this video, I show how I replace the decking on this deck rebuild project, as well as a trick to straighten out stubborn boards to reduce gap space between decking planks. Stick around. This is the third video in this deck rebuild series. Please make sure to watch the previous videos as well. To start things off, I ordered pressure treated lumber for the decking. It'll work well for this project, but since it is wet from treatment, it will shrink and leave some gaps as it dries. Now I left some of the old decking in place to be able to work off while adding the new. I lay the first board tight to the patio edge. I'm using three inch stainless steel deck screws, two per joist. I start at one end of the board and then go to the other end to bend the board in position before securing it with the screws. Then I could install screws over the rest of the joist locations. This deck is long enough it needed two 2x6 decking boards to cover the span. I plan on a staggered seam and added 2x boards to the stringers where the deck boards would meet. This would allow for better deck board support as the end of each deck board would be secured to independent boards. I like to install this type of lumber with the end grain in an upright rainbow position when possible. Now some people to say to do this the opposite way. Please let me know in the comments below which you think is the best way. I continue to lay and fasten deck boards from this point, making sure to keep the boards tight to each other and using two screws per joist. I demo the old deck boards as needed and remove any old fasteners in the stringers before adding the new deck boards using an angle grinder. To create the staggered seam, I had to cut some deck boards to length. I used a speed square as a guide for my circular saw to make the cuts. At the deck board seams, I would often set the screws here first, then secure the other end of the deck board, and then screw off the rest of the board at the stringers. At times, I would still end up with a gap between the boards due to the nature of real wood lumber and its imperfections. To reduce the gap space, I temporarily screwed a scrap board to a stringer to use as a pry point. I took another longer scrap deck board as a pry bar and forced the board into a tighter position, secured in place with deck screws before removing the pry board. Thankfully, the deck boards are fairly springy if you have a good way to apply a pry force. Now before finishing the decking, I painted the rail post and top railing thinking it would just be easier to do at this point. The last two deck boards needed to be smaller in width for a proper fit, so I ripped them down the size using a straight board as a saw guide. I also needed to compensate for the rail post. To do this, I set the deck board on the edge of the last deck board. Using a square lined up with a post edge, I measured the space between the deck board and post edge. I transferred the measurement onto the deck board and then drew a line to mark for the cut. I repeated this process for the other side of the post measured and marked a line, and then using a straight edge, connected these two lines. Now I had the area to cut out so the board could fit nicely around the post. I repeated this process for each post. Now to cut out the space, I started with a circular saw to make some starter cuts, and then I transitioned to a jigsaw, orienting the blade slightly at an outward angle. I did this because with this saw, the saw blade sometimes bends inward, and it is helpful to have more room at the bottom of the deck board cut for installing the deck board. In hindsight, it probably would have been easiest just to complete the entire cut with the jigsaw. I decided to pre-drill the board near the cutouts for the post to minimize splitting and then secured the cut board into place using the screws. Throughout the decking process, I let the deck boards float long to make a straight line cut at this point. To do so, I made a chalk line and started with a plunge cut on the line and then worked in one direction. Then I turned around and finished the cut in the other direction. And there you have it, a solid new deck surface. I hope you enjoyed the video and give it a like if so, and make sure to subscribe and click the notification icon to see the remaining videos in this deck rebuild series, including the railing, installation, as well as other DIY projects. Thanks for watching.